Yo guys, what's good today? Today, um, we're taking a look at, uh, as you can see, Aegis Slash. So, um, I don't really have anything particular to, uh, ramble off about before this one. So, uh, I guess let's just jump right into the moveset. So, um, um, we're gonna be doing three sets. Um, this one, first one we're gonna do... It's going to be more of a special attack variant. It's going to be the more common variant you see. Um, this um, so-called special attacking variant, um, he can go mixed um, attacking quite easily, um, and you will often see him as a mixed attacker. But, um, you know, it... it you guys will see it, um, I'll, it'll, I'll show you with the moveset or whatever, um, anyways, and the, and this one will be more of a physical attacker, and this one will be a defense that I'll probably just make up as we go along, because, uh, I haven't seen too many defensive sets, but anyways, yeah, we're, we're gonna jump right in, I guess I did have stuff to ramble on about before we got into the moveset, anyways, um, special attacking variant. We're going to go with quiet nature so we can increase his special attack and decrease his speed. Now let me explain why we want to decrease his speed. Um, first we're going to make his IV and speed zero. Those are for uh, all you guys who uh, need to be uh, perfect like myself. I spent two weeks breeding for this guy and finally got him to have uh, perfect IVs and everything, and a zero. It was, uh, it's quite annoying. Uh, in case you guys don't know, Destiny not only passes down five, so, uh, the sixth one, you gotta get lucky on. So, um, you know. Enough of my rambling about my, um, problems I have with, uh, breeding my Pokemon, because, uh, I have to have them perfect. Perfect. Blah. Um, en enough of that. Anyways, um, let me explain why you want the zero in speed. That's, that's what you guys want to know. Um, you want the zero in speed because it all has to do with his ability stance change. Um, I guess I better explain stance change first. Stance change is, um, what happens is when he uses an attacking move, he will switch into blade form. He has two different forms, shield form and blade form. He starts in shield form, and I didn't mean to clear that. Um, he starts in shield form, and these are his base stats for when he's in shield form. What happens is when he changes to um, blade form, his defense will switch with his attack and his special defense will switch with his special attack. So essentially he'll have a base 150 in attack and 50 in defense and a base 150 in special attack and a base 50 in special defense. And what that means is he'll you know, he'll hit harder, he'll become a much stronger attacker. He he has base 150s for crying out loud. That's going to hit hard. But the trade-off is your defense becomes really low. So when they hit you back, you're gonna take a you're gonna take a hit because your defense is just dropped by base 100. So you're gonna you're gonna not be tanking hits at all. In shield form, however, look at those base 150s. You're gonna be tanking everything. Granted, you do only have 60 base HP, but still, base 150s in both defenses, you're going to be tanking everything. So that brings me back to why he runs a as low a speed stat as possible. Because you want your opponent to outspeed you and hit you first. So they hit you while you're still in uh, shield form. So that way, then after they've already hit you and you've eaten up all their damage like a yummy, delicious treat, 
you can then proceed to hit them back when you switch to blade form, hit them for tons of damage, and then you won't have to worry about getting hit while in blade form because next turn, yes, they're still going to outspeed you, and yes, you're going to stay in blade form. However, um, I guess I might as well just talk about it. Um, his signature move, King Shield, it's basically a protect except uh, it doesn't protect from status moves, it only protects from attacks, and uh, they will get, um, they'll lose attack if they hit you with a contact move. They'll, uh, they'll get a minus, I think just minus one attack. I don't think it's minus two, that'd be, that'd be too OP. Granted, Aegislash is already pretty OP. But anyways, King Shield, when you use it, it will switch you back into Blade form. Or, Shield form. Sorry. And, just like Protect, it has priority. So, you can safely get hit, take that damage, then proceed to hit them back, and the next turn you won't have to worry about getting hit because you can use King Shield and since it has priority you'll go first and then switch back into Shield form plus you're protecting yourself from any attacking moves if they choose to use one. Now however they might predict your King Shield and hit you with a Will-O-Wisp or something or a Toxic or no he's Steel you can't get hit by Toxic never mind um Thunder Wave you know something like that and you know that might hurt but um you basically you can't um you can control it to where you only get hit while in shield form because then the following turn after you use king shield you're then still in shield form and then the process will repeat itself they'll hit you first then you'll hit them back and then you avoided taking, um, you avoided taking a lot of damage when in, uh, blade form, because blade form, you become, you turn in, basically blade form, you change from being a monster tank into a monster offensive. You're no longer a tank in blade form, and in shield form, you're no longer an um, good at offenses, but that doesn't matter because you'll change into blade form every time you need to. So that's that's not a deal, big deal. Anyways, now that I've taken 20 minutes of your time explaining this, uh, apologize to everyone who's always like already knows this and is like, come on, get on with the move set. I will get on with the move set. We're going to max his HP, and we're going to max his special attack, and then you can throw your four extra, depending on what set you want. If you're going to go with the mixed variant, throw the extra in attack. If you're not, throw them in one of the defenses, and uh, that'll do it for his, um, his uh, EV spread. So as far as his other moves go, along with King Shield, I think I've already explained this thoroughly. Um, you know, it's mainly just to change you back into Shield form. Plus, I mean, it's a pseudo protect. Um, like I said, it doesn't protect from status, but it protects from any damaging move. So, um, you know, that'll save you from taking damage. Um, so move on to his other moves. Um, special attack variant, he's gonna want to run Shadow Ball, and he's gonna want to run Flash Cannon. Those are his two stabs, um, they're, that's his strongest special ghost stab, that's his strongest, um, steel special stab, so, um, not really a lot to explain there. There are your two stab moves of choice, um. Uh, 
you know, they're basically your only options for special as far as it goes, um, and, and they work well. Now the last move, however, is what determines whether you are a pure special or you go a little mixed. So you two options here, or three options actually, is um, if you're going full special, you run substitute, because substitute, you know, it's nice. Um, basically what it does is, um, you know, for Aegislash, it means he can attack more than two, more than, blah. he can attack twice in a row without having to worry about getting hit and taking tons of damage because as long as you set up a sub you know you don't have to worry about getting uh, O-code because you're in blade form because uh, you have a sub to take your damage so that it gives him the option to um, you know use either shadow bar or flash cannon um, in um, consecutively um, so that way um, if you're not running substitute um, you're not forced to use king shield every other turn but if you want to avoid taking or if you want to if you want to avoid the chance of taking tons of damage because you're in blade form you're almost forced to use king shields every other turn. Now if, now if you're getting real crazy and you know predicting their predictions of your king shield and you know then you know you can take a chance you know cuz it's not always black and white when you're in a battle and you're not always you know it's not always super obvious what they're gonna do you know it's not like they're always gonna be like oh he's in blade form let me attack him you know, because some people are smart enough to know, oh, he's going to use King Shield this turn, so I might not even bother, you know, I'll take this turn to switch, I'll take this turn to set up, or, you know, take this turn to will o -Wisp him or whatever. So, um, if, if you can predict their prediction, you know, you're not forced, you know, that's an example of a turn that you would use Shadow Ball twice in a row or something. But, um, otherwise, you know, you're almost forced to use King Shield every other turn. So what Substitute basically does is it, you know, it frees you up a little bit, and as long as you have a sub up, you don't have to use King Shield every other turn. So, um, it makes you a little less predictable. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a good move. As far as his other options goes, um, this is when he goes a bit more um, mixed and uh, he runs Sacred Sword. Now um, you're going to want to uh, put the extra in attack if you're going to do this. But um, Sacred Sword, um, basically it's just a physical um, fighting type move and um, it ignores stat changes. So basically if they have boost to their defense, it's going to ignore it. But um, you know, it's it's base ninety power, ninety five, ninety power, not ninety five, um, hundred percent accurate, and you know, it provides good coverage is what it's here for, because um, fighting type uh, uh, fighting type moves gonna help him take out a lot of things that he normally wouldn't be able to oko, um. So I mean it's it's great coverage. Um as far as um how much damage it's gonna do, um yes you have no investment into attack except that four extra, but he switches to base one fifty attack, so it's it's still gonna do tons of damage. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about it at all. It's it's gonna do tons of damage. Now, as far as his last option here, it is Shadow Sneak. What this does is, you know, it's it's another ghost type uh, stab, so you get stab off of it, but it's physical, and you know, it's 
for those of you who don't know, it's basically ghost type quick attack. Um, it goes first. That's what it does. It has priority. So this is it's a great move when you know um you know, you're not gonna outspeed them. Well well you're basically always not gonna outspeed people because of your low speed. I mean you're gonna outspeed other stuff that runs minus speed. But um anyways, um it's great for when you know you're not gonna outspeed but you also know that perhaps he's low on HP and it doesn't matter if you're in shield form or not you don't think you're gonna be able to take it so you're gonna shadow sneak him it's also great for you know it doesn't matter if he's low on HP or not there are things that are gonna oko you while in shield form um, a chandelier My headset turned off again. This happened in the last video. I apologize, guys. Um, what was I saying? Um, a chandelier's overheat. Yeah, that is going to oko you, no matter if you're in uh, shield form or not. So, if they send out a chandelier, you know, shadow sneak them. Um, it's not guaranteed to oko the chandelier, but it will be guaranteed if um, you have a little boost from uh, your item which I'm gonna get into the items now because that's all his options there um, weakness policy weakness policy if you don't know what it does if you get hit by a super effective move then your uh, attack and special attack both both get a plus two boost so you're gonna just annihilate everything not only do you have base 150s in both attacks but now you've plus two in both your attacks that's shadow sneak it only has 40 base power and it's gonna murder all kinds of things <laughs> if you've already got hit by uh, super effective move and um, you know survived because Chandelure he has an easy time or a fairly easy time surviving super effective moves while in shield form because you know base 150s and both defenses that's nothing to nothing to laugh at that's 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 a great base stat so um you're gonna hit people basically they're gonna hit you and you're gonna be like, hey, that tickled, and then you're just gonna backhand them across the face, and you're gonna, they're just gonna die. If if the backhand doesn't kill them, they're just gonna lie down and die just out of terror. Cause I mean, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about either. Um, <laughs> they basically you're plus two in both attacks, so you're a monster. So, um, as far as your other options go, that was weird, um, as far as your other options go as item, you really only have one option as a form of leftovers because, um, what Pokemon can't use leftovers? <laughs> um, you know, it's leftovers. Um, you get that residual HP back and, uh, not really much to explain other than that, um, you know, he makes decent use of it because he's a tank half the time, so, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an option. Now, on to the next Age of Slash. This Age of Slash is going to be very similar, except he is going to be an attacking variant. And, um, he doesn't really, um, entertain the option of being a mixed attacker. So, um, just all your extra in defense or special defense, whatever. And, um, as far as nature goes, um, let me find, um, 
yeah, brave. That's what it is. Um, to minus your speed and uh, you know, for all you perfectionists, put that IV to zero. And um, we'll move on to the move set here. He's gonna run King Shield because that's his signature move. That's that's how he switches back into shield form. So he, he always be running that. But uh, for his second move, however, he's going to be running Sword Stance. Now, this is a set I see almost more often than I do the first one. But I honestly don't understand why, because as far as his um, ghost type stabs go, his strongest one is... Um, Shadow Claw, which is weaker than Shadow Ball, albeit only by 10 base power, and it has a higher crit ratio, but, um, you know, it is 10 base power weaker than, um, Shadow Ball, um, so, you're almost banking on getting a Sword Stance off on this set, for this to, you know, be better um but you know it's um it's it's certainly a set that I see run all the time so you know it has to, it has to be good um well I mean I'm not saying it's bad I'm just uh I'm not quite sure if it's better than this variant but it's certainly popular, that's for sure. So, um, I'm going to show you guys it. And, um, you run Shadow Claw usually, and, um, as far as this second option here, um, this is where you have quite a lot of options. Um, Okay, I think my headset cut out. Um, wireless headset, what's it gonna do? Um, been having a little bit of problems with this lately. I have to look at that. Um, but anyways, um, as far as this other option for his fourth move set, this is where you got a lot of options. Um, as far as his steel type stabs go, you have the option of either Iron Head which is going to be your more reliable one. You know, it's got 80 base power. Um, it's got that nice 30% chance to flinch them. That's that's pretty nice. And um, it's it's your physical steel move of, um, well, it's one of your physical steel moves options. You know, it's, it's your reliable option. However, you can also run Gyro Ball, which is going to be a lot stronger when you're going against a fast opponent. Which, uh, I guess let me explain how Gyro Ball works. Um, basically, the way the formula goes is um, it takes their, their speed stat, not their base, but their stat. Their base, not their base. I keep saying base, I'm sorry. Um, it takes their speed stat, whatever that is, and then divides it by your speed stat and then whatever number you get out of that it multiplies it by 25 and then that becomes gyro ball's base power um now the simplified version of that is it's stronger when you're going against a fast opponent and it's weaker when you're going against a slow opponent so you know the base power varies so while Iron Head has that consistent 80 base all the time, Gyro Ball has the potential to be all the way up to 150, or as a, or as low as um, I really don't know the limit on how low it can be, but you know, um, I think it has a. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know. It can get pretty low. It can do basically no damage if they're really slow as well because you're going to be really slow too um so basically what that means is 
Um, Gyro Ball is definitely an option, and it's definitely going to do tons of damage to fast opponents. You just won't bother using it against something that's super slow, because it's not going to do any damage. Now, um, as far as the other options in this uh, slot, um, you got Sacred Sword, which I already explained. It's you know it's a great coverage move. Um, you know, it's physical. Um, it ignores their base stat or whatever, or stat changes, not their base. Uh, but um, you know, it's good coverage. It's an option. So um, as far as other options go, you can run Shadow Sneak in this slot. But normally you would see Shadow Sneak take up this slot instead and something such as, I don't know, Sacred Sword be kept in this slot or, um, you know, something, something different. Um, I think it changed, yeah, that's supposed to be Brave. Ignore that. Adamant's not an option. Don't run Adamant. Um, you know, um, if you're running Shadow Sneak, I mean, you still have all the other options, you know, Iron Head, whatever. Um, um, but, um, as far as his options go, basically just any two of his, um, is, uh, any two of his uh, physical um, physical moves that I listed are options. Um, you basically always run a, want to run a ghost type stab in the form of Shadow Claw is what you normally want to use, but you can sacrifice it for Shadow Sneak, I suppose. And um, you know. Consider the option of a uh, steel type stab as well, but Sacred Sword also provides really good coverage with just a shadow or just a ghost type move. Um, so, you know, those are your options on this guy. Um, we'll get into the item. Um, he runs the same items, either weakness policy or leftovers are your two options for him and uh, basically that's what you're going to be seeing from this guy so we'll move on to the third age slash option which is um albeit a weird one um one that I've seen only a few times so basically it's going to be defensive age slash now however his base stats are equal on both defenses. So you have the option to run him as a special defense or with sassy or a more defensive with um honestly I don't know what nature that is, but we'll find it. Um hmm. I feel like if Oh, it's, it's literally right next to Sassy. I'm retarded. Relaxed. <laughs> Relaxed nature for a defensive one. So, um, we're just going to use a special defense one as a example. And max the special defense. And then throw you extra in either defense. Yeah, I thought a defense. Don't, don't really bother with the attack. Um, but... Actually, we'll take a look at the relaxed one. Um, you could actually run um, it like that if you wanted. And let me put that to zero just because it's bothering me because I'm a perfectionist. Um, and you can run it either, you know, with the sassy one or the relaxed one. Um, Mm, I want to try and figure out if there's a way to do a mixed one. Um, you know, maybe something like that. Um, stats still aren't even. 
uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm just making stuff up at this point right now. Um, I'm not sure really. Um, yeah, they're basically even now. Um, I don't know. Um, you might want to ignore all this because this might be a horrible option. Um, but that is going to make you mixed wall. Um, and your base stats certainly support the ability to be a mixed wall. Um, I can go back to Sassy and, uh, what is it, um, put 60 in there and 196 in there and what is that, it's going to make them even again, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, this is just me spitballing, you should probably ignore this, this might be bad, but, uh, I'm just going to leave it like that for now, anyways, we're going to get into the moveset. And, um, the moveset on this one, like all the other ones, gonna run King's Shield because that's how you get back into shield form. And, um, um, we're gonna probably want to run Toxic on this because Toxic, um, sadly Aegislash doesn't have access to Will-O-Wisp or that would definitely be an option. Um. So you can you can probably easily stall out a lot of guys with toxic because you're so tanky. And um as far as your other options, um not really sure. You probably just want to throw in um a couple of stab moves, um be it um as far as your ghost type stab moves, um I'm really sorry, my headset keeps cutting out. It's, uh, it's honestly getting on my nerves. It's, I just, stupid headset. Ah, it's so comfy, though. It's got memory foam. But, um, it needs to keep cutting off. It's, I know why it's doing it. It's doing it because, uh, it, I'm not playing any sound, and so it thinks I'm not using it. But, um, anyways, enough of my headset. I'm sorry. Um, Back to the move set. Um, basically, as far as your ghost type options go, you're gonna run either Shadow Ball or Shadow Sneak, because since you're not Swords Dancing or have any investment to either um, attacking stat, your bases are the same. So Shadow Claw, there's no real point in even um, using it. So, um, you're gonna run either Shadow Ball or Shadow Sneak. Um, I'm just gonna go with Shadow Ball. And, um, then as far as your other options go, um, you run either, um, well, let's see, as far as Steel's type stabs go, Flash Cannon and Iron Head have, Iron Head have the same, um, they have the same base power, don't they? So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, Ironhead's got that really nice 30% chance to fletch. And you are also still really slow, so, um, Gyro Ball's still an option. So, um, honestly, it's a toss-up between Flash Cannon Iron Head or Gyro Ball here for your Steel Stab, but you may not even want to run a Steel Stab, and Sacred Sword's still an option, so that's a thing. Um, I wouldn't really recommend running Shadow Sneak in this slot, because um, you you yeah you really don't want two Ghost type stabs. Especially if they're your only attacking moves. Um, so if you're going to run Shadow Sneak, put it in the place of Shadow Ball. So, um, honestly, I'm just going to put Flash Cannon, but, um, you know. 
it's it's definitely a toss up um because it's got the same base power as iron head so those are both kind of options it's just kind of do you want to you want to be able to hit defensive walls easier or do you want to be able to hit special walls easier you know or do you just want to play it uh you just want to gamble play it risky and uh go with gyro ball which is going to do tons of damage if they send out someone fast against you especially if it's uh super effective um or you know or do you just want to run sacred sword honestly i think your best option is sacred sword unless you really want that steel type stab because sacred sword along with shadow ball they just provide great coverage. It's not, I don't think it's perfect coverage, but it's great coverage, um, especially it takes out dark types that uh, you're weak to, because steel no longer resists dark type uh, now in Gen 6. Um, so, honestly, that's probably what I'd do. And as far as your item goes, I don't think you're gonna want to bother with um, uh, sacred sword really or I mean sacred sword's an item now wow who knew weakness policy I don't even know what I'm saying anymore I don't think you're going to even want to bother with it because you're going mainly defensive not offensive so um I'd go with the good old lefties um lumberry might be an option um It'll, it'll save you after you get burned or something. Um, actually, now that I think about it, Lumberry's an option on probably the Swords Dance set, too, if you guys want to consider that. Um, but um, you probably just want to go with good old lefties. And um, I really hate to do this, but uh, on the original set, I uh, did forget to mention uh, one of his options down here. Um, I hate to go back to it after I've already done the others, but um forgot to mention be a breeding, he gets wide guard, and you're only going to ever run a, want to run this if you're doing it in double battles, and even if you are, you might not want, um, you might not even really want wide guard, but basically wide guard, it protects all your allies from the multi-attack hits, so, um, you know, like Earthquake or whatever, because, um, he's certainly weak to Earthquake. Um, crap. That also reminds me of another item option, uh, Air Balloon. He can run Air Balloon on any of these sets. Um, yeah, honestly, any of these sets could do with an air balloon um which uh i don't know if you want to run air balloon on the guy who has wide guard but um i don't know um well weakness policy still um it's gonna give you that boost after you get hit by an earthquake but the problem is are you gonna survive that earthquake um, you're going to survive it off some people. Some people you are not going to survive it off of. Um, so, um, those are your three options. Um, mainly your main three options. And then within those three options, there's tons of options. Um, yeah. Sum it all up. Age of Slash has quite a lot of options um considering he's both a tank and a sweeper at the same time um he's got quite a few options you can emphasize mainly on the tank side you can emphasize mainly on the offensive side or you can go a bit in the middle um he's got a lot of options so um that wraps things up for this video um as always thanks for watching guys um 
I'd appreciate it if you give it a comment, a like. Um, speaking of comments, uh, for the remainder of October, I know that's not a, it's not a very long, but um, we're gonna still be doing uh, spooky ghost theme for uh, the move sets I'm bringing you guys. So um, if you have one to suggest leave it in the comments and I might just do it um I know I don't have a lot of days left and I'm not sure if I'll release one before October ends but um if I get enough requests for a certain one I'll try and squeeze it in at the end so um as always thanks for watching um I'd appreciate a like um I appreciate comments. I, I do read the comments um, that are non-existent at the moment, but uh, I, I won't get into that. Um, you know, I'm just starting out. Uh, but, um, and uh, if you're um, super cool and uh, a nice guy, you could subscribe. That'd be cool. I'd uh, definitely appreciate it. It uh, certainly helps me. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to quit rambling and wasting your life. And uh, I'm going to swat away these stupid gnats that are bothering me. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs>